We just finished a great presentation by Professor B.J. Fogg from Stanford University. And um, B.J., you had some really great uh, information about utilizing behavioral data uh, to make your technology product better. Um, if it's just one quick summary of what you talked about today, can you tell our audience that? Yeah, I, well I think for startups, first and foremost, you have to understand what behavior you want your end user to do. And a lot of times it's just assumed that everybody knows that. So getting very specific, what's the behavior we want people to do? Uh, and then making that even easier. So if you want people to use, say, your site every, every day for the rest of their lives, you're probably not going to achieve that. You need to boil it back and, and make it much simpler and recognize that everybody who has won big started out with something very simple. Nobody has ever succeeded that started with something very complicated for consumers. Everything with lots of features and builds, everything that was complicated has failed in the consumer space. And all the companies that are big now started with something really small and a very specific kind of uh, behavior they wanted. And they grew from there. And that sounds easier than it is, right? To figure out that one thing that you want your consumers to do. How would you arrive to that one thing? Well. Help people do what they already want to do. So, um, you know, so I would look at what are people already kind of hacking together in the world? What are the dissatisfaction points? So, so that's not new to anybody that's in the startup space. But when you think of it from a behavioral perspective, you can get people to do things they already want to do, make it easier for them to do, and then figure out a way to trigger the behavior. So in the model that I shared tonight, there are three pieces that have to come together at once for a behavior. The behavior has to be triggered, and it has to be triggered when people have sufficient ability and motivation to do that thing. So trigger, ability, motivation. And if the motivation already exists, then all you have to do is make it easy enough to do and then trigger it, and you're done. Right? If it doesn't work, then you look at, are we triggering it? You know, are we making the call to action? And if, and if you're confident you are, then where's the ability issue? Is it too hard? Is it too complicated? And then only lastly do you worry about motivation. Usually the problem gets solved by looking at triggering and ability issues. Interesting. And so we're looking at social behavior and technology, and it seems that it's just been the advent of the social networks that this has been even more and more applicable to the use of technology. Uh, how do you think this, your study, your, your research, will evolve as technology evolves into becoming even more into social data? Yeah. Well, I think... I mean, the, 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 the channels of Facebook and other kind of social ways of connecting people are important. I think the mobile phone is the real holy grail. So where we're going, and it's been clear for a while now, and we're making progress little by little. When I say we, I mean the world and industry, is how does this mobile device trigger me to do the right thing at the right time and something I already want to do? Oh, it's lunchtime. I want to eat healthy. Where do I go, right? Uh, oh, I haven't yet worked out today. How does it trigger me at that right moment where it's like, yeah, I can take a break from work and go work out. So there's this, it's not here yet. You know, we're still a ways away, but there's this uh, great thing coming where that mobile device helps us achieve our goals and it triggers us to do things at the right time in the right way. Uh, pretty big learning curve, but the companies that figure that out early have a lot to gain. I heard of this uh, application called Near, and it triggers whenever you're near a certain, like the post office, oh, you need to send mail. And that seems like a, an interesting application of your, your study, right? Yeah, so, so that, that's going, now there, Near and others, there's going to be a whole bunch of people in this space, and only, um, there's going to be a lot of failures. So um, the technology, let's say texting, for example, let's get away from apps like Near. Texting right now is a great way to trigger people, except it's not well-timed, and there's no way for me to prioritize a text from my mom versus a text from, you know, uh, a retail outlet. Um, I think one of these days that will get fixed is there's so much money involved in figuring out how to do that right. We'll figure it out. It's not so different if you roll, go back in time with social networks. A lot of the early social networks were clunky. They didn't quite do it right. They failed. And we're at that stage right now, I think, with delivering stuff through mobile. And well, I don't think there'll be one winner like Facebook is in the, the, you know, the social networking space. Um, but I think we just need to hang in there and people need to think, 
if you use my methods in behavior design, you can absolutely save yourself from big mistakes and big failures, guaranteed. You'll have lots of little failures because that's part of the method, right? And it's not just my method, it's just, it's now understood that's how you do it. But you absolutely won't have big failures and you'll put yourself on the path to success. Big failures meaning your company will go under yeah, kind of or, thing. Yeah, or, or, or you do a product and you've been working on it for six or eight or 10 months, which is a mistake, by the way. You shouldn't be working that long on something. And you launch it and it doesn't work. That's a, Nowadays, that's a really dumb way to launch a service for consumers. The smart way is to get something out there as fast as you can and see what happens. You know, get, Be very precise about what behavior you want. Try to trigger it. If it doesn't work, try something else and so on. So I'm not the only one saying that kind of thing right now. Lots of people are saying that. I think what makes my work unique is um, picking the right target behavior and then knowing how to break that down into something simpler and then sequencing the behaviors or steps for achieving that. That's the domain I'm calling behavior design. It's very systematic. As you saw, it's not guesswork. It's just motivation, ability, trigger. There's 15 types of behaviors. There's a formula for each of those types. There's patterns that have worked for thousands of years among humans and it's a matter of finding the right psychological recipe or pattern and then applying it in the right way. And this could be applied beyond just the apps that are fun here in you know, the US and it could, you're talking about mobile phones which is widely used all around the world and how would this, uh, your model be applied to something that is more uh, systemically a, a, a human issue, a social issue? Yeah, uh, sustainability. So. Wow, where do I, there's just so much to talk about here. I mean, I'll give you an example. About six months ago, an organization from Europe, Northern Europe, came to my lab and said, here's what we're doing. And I was like, okay, interesting. Uh, have you changed any behaviors? Well, we don't know. It's like, what? And then they showed me another project. Well, did it have any impact? Well, we don't know. It was a really cool visualization. It was just like kind of cool and sexy. It's like visual eye candy. And then at the end of it, I said, okay, my advice to your institute, and they'd spent lots of money is, don't do any projects where you can't trigger the behavior and track the behavior. Otherwise you end up, yeah, it's nice, but you don't know whether it's worked or not. So um, you, you start with what you can measure and the other filter is what, can, what behavior can we trigger. So don't do any projects on things you can't measure because it's maybe not useless, but... How so, can you ever improve? Yeah, so in the sustainability space, in lots of spaces, people have made lots of mistakes for many, many years. Uh, and that's a big part of our work at Stanford is let's help people think clearly about behavior and let's help people systematically design for behavior so they get to a success point and they don't end up, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, putting all their eggs in one basket and spending a year and millions of dollars and pulling the switch and it doesn't work. That's, but you know, whenever I talk about that to companies and, and I didn't show it tonight, but I have a visual of like a little machine, a little engine and a big one. When I showed the big one, almost always the whole room breaks out in laughter because it's like, that's how we do it. And I'm like, yeah, and that's why you guys are not, you know. Um, there's tons of great models within Silicon Valley, within the startup world, lean startup and so on of, you know, much better process. Um, we know a lot about persuasion intuitively because we've all grown up with it, but what people are pretty bad at is thinking systematically and clearly about behavior change and persuasion and the and it's been you know we haven't done perfect work we've, we've made mistakes we've revised but at Stanford where we're trying to provide the the language and the system for thinking about persuasion and behavior change that's accurate but also actionable simple enough that you can teach in an hour and people can go, go back to their companies and start applying it and you said that this still is a work in progress. So what in particular is the, needs the most work, in your opinion? Wow. Um, prob the thing we've not systematized, wow, I've never shared this before. I shared it with my students, is if there's a big behavioral goal, like let's get people to live sustainably, which is like this big goal. You can't design for that because it's so abstract. How do you take that and systematically break it down into a very small, practical behavior target, what is, what is the tool, the wizard, the mechanism that we can create and give to people where they can get from the big 
thing down to specific, not just one, but a variety, and then start designing for those. So what, right now, in our work, it's just intuition. It's like, oh, sustainability, well, it's probably this and this and this and this. So it's, it, we're not, that's the only part right now in behavior design that's not systematized. Everything else is part of a system. It's a method, there's steps. It's clear why you're doing one thing and not another. Um, that's a piece that's missing. Um, and I challenged my students to figure it out, and maybe they will. That would be awesome. And if not, then I'll do it one of these days. I just haven't been able to put time into it yet. Maybe somebody else will. That would be awesome. Let us know. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much. And where can we find out more information? And isn't there a book? Wow. Yeah, there's various books. But the stuff I talked about tonight is not yet written. Okay. Um, if you go to bjfog.com, I'll point to a few things. If you go to my Stanford lab site, so probably just type in fog and Stanford, you'll find stuff there. Uh, a book is coming. A few books are coming. I've been just so busy training, doing the boot camps that I do, uh, that you know, a book, a book takes months and months of work, so I've had to trade that off against, do I want to have impact in the world right now, or do I, and then it takes long... Or do I want to wait and wait until it comes out? So I've decided to have impact right now. Stay tuned. Twitter, we release things on Twitter. I mean, the, the usual suspects. Just stay tuned. And uh, we share stuff pretty fast. Yeah. Excellent. And so the workshops are where we can find it on your website, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of saying yeah because I don't have a big schedule of boot camps because I have... It's like when I see I have a few days free in three weeks, I call a boot camp and announce it on Twitter and I have a little list of people. Um, so it's not, it's not like a big, it's like I do them when I can. Uh, but most of them up at my guest home in the wine country on a river, which is awesome. Yeah, it's great. And it's two days and 10 people. We all sit around one big table. And it allows me to get to know everybody and work hands-on with everybody. It's a great formula. Sometimes I'm going, well, more and more, I'm going into companies. So they're go bringing me into the companies to do stuff. Um, I like doing it at my guest home more because it takes people out of their environment and brings them into a really beautiful space where they can really focus on what we're doing without being distracted by typical work things. Um, we'll see where that goes. I, what, um, I wish there were a way to scale that, and eventually we'll find a way to do it. But right now, it's just a lot of hands-on with me. Well, it's excellent work, and thank you so much, Professor. And uh, we'll find out more about uh, Startup to Startup uh, in the next couple of months. We're, we're going to have more every month, so stay tuned. I'm Arabella Santiago. <laughs>